He used to beat me up and burn me with the iron. My whole body is disfigured. He used to lock me up in the bathroom for days without food. He was a monster, but I didn't dare complain. An Arab woman describing abuse at the hands of her husband in that scene from a controversial new program called The Thick Red Line on LBC, the Lebanese Broadcasting Corporation. We'll talk about all this with Rula Dashti and Sheikha Lubna, who join us once again. Now that program, first of all, what it said was pretty outrageous about how some women are treated. But also, as you know, it's a program, a different one, that created a huge amount of controversy with a Saudi Arabian journalist being threatened with 60 lashes. Then King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia pardoned her and that hasn't happened. But how prevalent is this abuse of women in all levels of society in this region? No question about it. Domestic violence is on the rise. It's unfortunate. On the rise. It's unfortunate. Why and, is that? And I'm not going to talk about only domestic violence. We have also economic violence on, on, on women. Uh, it's uh, unfortunate. Maybe the closeness to the society. The societies are becoming more enclosed. More closed. The societies are becoming more enclosed. Uh, that, that's what we're talking about. Opening the society for tolerance, for for the, uh, accepting different ideas, uh, for dialoguing is is the path forward and we're reflecting it in our unfortunately in our small uh, society units where where husband thinks they are over controlling uh, there's countries because the legislations are not solid also which gives more rights and power for husbands and they don't get uh, punished for it and with the traditional society that women don't speak out frequently also you get so much abuses which are not reported domestic violence all over the world is is a problem it's an issue for uh, all the regions of the world but uh, we think because of our religion that treats women very good we shouldn't have these types of things mm -hmm. uh, into it unfortunately that type of you know, uh, respecting the religion and what it says regarding treating women is not have been adopted, but we start to restrain the role of women. And are you, by trying, to, are you trying to make sure that that is, is stopped by being in parliament? Uh, yes, for sure, yeah. no question about it. And I just want to just make a point about the veil because we, we missed it. Our lawsuits against the veil is not Rola wears the veil or Asil wears the veil. It's an issue where the country is heading. Are we going to have a religious doctrine uh, ruling the country with radical ideology, or we're going to have a constitutional country which respects civil liberty? So the veil so was. What do you think? The veil you, was. Which one are you going to have? The veil was symbolic in where we're heading, and uh, we're lucky that we set the standard for the future of the country. It's a constitutional country that respects civil liberties, and this is what symbolizes it. Our win is not. I want not wearing the veil. We want a case where our country is heading for a better future, and this is what the Kuwaiti people wanted to see. So do you think it's heading in that direction? For sure, and we're working towards well, it. Well, we'll see. And what about here, Lubna? Because look, to be frank, there is no meaningful democratic process in the UAE. There are no meaningful elections. There's no minimum wage. Uh, there's no political activity. And indeed, there is a huge amount of female abuse, particularly amongst domestic workers here. I mean, that, that scene could be replicated anywhere. Yeah. Is anything being done to protect the women here? Um, Domestic violence exists everywhere, but the most important part is uh, are the legislation um, existing or not, and second, uh, exercising the rule of the law, because you could have, you could have a, a, a particular law to protect women, but if you're not exercising it, then it's meaningless. So is it In here? In here, it is, and uh, what it, we've, we've seen shelters being developed uh, for women. Um, to take them away from abuse. It's been quite public, it's been talked about. Uh, there has been um, even high level of government official who's saying that we have no tolerance for this. And as Rolla said, uh, when it comes to religion, when it comes to culture, it is actually considered um, uh, something that it's uh, uh, abhorring. People do not accept this. But the problem is, is when you have it, uh, if you bring it out to the limelight and make sure that you actually do, do um, exercise a form of punishment, um, then you are uh, heading toward the right direction um, we've seen judges here who actually would vote and support women in their divorces if they actually come up with uh, valid cases of abuse at home so it's uh, it, so uh, in the Emirates is, it, in the Emirates it's a little bit different it's not uh, uh, the most important part is, is you bring it outside and as so raise said, these issues if you raise mm -hmm. it if it's public and uh, there has been incidents where um, you see people talking about it uh, and communities supporting uh, let me talk uh, about 
the political landscape and, and you talked about accountability, not just in these criminal cases and issues, but also in, in the political landscape. In Kuwait, for instance, we hear a lot of frustration with the political process and you articulated some of it. The leader can dissolve parliament when and when he wants, right? The, the, the prime minister. No, not the prime the, minister. Sorry, the emir. The emir can, by constitution. Yeah. We're just uh, governed by constitution. The emir has the right to dissolve the so parliament. So is there meaningful activity in parliament? Uh, yes, for sure, because uh, currently the emir cannot, when we have our parliament, the emir cannot come and say, this is a doctrine, this is a decree, I want to implement it. It has to go through the democratic, democratic process where the parliament has to approve every law. And in the event that there is a dissolution of parliament and the emir puts a decree, it has to be voted again with the, within the parliament. So the dissolution of parliament does not mean taking away the, the sharing of power within the, uh, the ruling family and the people of it. And this is what happened in 1999, when the head of the state, the late Emir, gave the grant of women the political rights. When it went and voted upon, it, uh, the parliament uh, refused it and rejected it. And so it's not a, 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 a automatic, like, uh, automatic mm -hmm. thing you can think. This is the democratic process. It has its ups and downs, but uh, no, there is a, a very hard saying with the people representative on how the future of the country goes. And this is where we get the tension and sometimes the frustrations with the people. The sis uh, system is not going the way they wanted it. What about the whole notion of progress in this part of the world? Look, this is one of the richest part of the world, and yet it's one of the least developed in terms of women's rights, in terms of GDP, in terms of all sorts of things. One of the leaders here, the, 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 the Prime Minister of the UAE, said in a book that he wrote, a report that he wrote, I want our Arab brothers and sisters to be as educated as those people in the developing world. And you're nowhere near that right now. How do you take that forward? If you look at the United Arab Emirates, 70% of university enrollment are women. 90% um, uh, in terms of literacy for women, 90%. Uh, it's considered one of the highest uh, uh, amongst the Arab world. Um, today, we have four women ministers, not one. I started in 2004. Within a year or two, we've actually accomplished to be four in the cabinet. 23% of women participation in our parliament, the National Council. Um, if you look at women entrepreneurs, 50% of the SMEs are actually women. So uh, either you lead by example and you take role, if you look at women in sports, or you leave it where you have to create a certain law um, uh, that actually would encourage or empower women. In the Emirates, there's no gender uh, discrimination in terms of uh, regulation or law per se. However, uh, there are women leading almost in every uh, part. If you look at uh, maybe women in investment general, but in just the, in general yeah, for the future, there's something yeah. like 60 million illiterates in the Arab world and 9 million children who don't go to school and this is one of the richest places in the world. How can I, that change? I, I'll tell you, I, I do share with you, I will talk to a woman in our region, more than 40% are illiterate in the region. Yes, we do have a lot of challenges, no question about it. We're progressing. We're progressing in terms of the education and health attainment, where life expectancy has been increasing in our region, the literacy rate has been dropping. But there's a lot of more than education and health. You need to gain the benefit of these types of investments, where women play a big role in the labor market. We have the lowest female labor participation in the labor market among the whole region. We have the lowest female representations in, in, in uh, compared to the rest of the world, 9% of uh, in the region are represented by in parliaments where the average of the world is 18 percent there is a lot of challenges no question about it we know about it we are moving forward to and this is where activism comes and we are moving forward to have a better life we're saying that women is a partner in the development of this uh, society I want and to, we're going to move forward to 